Hello, this is Hawk Bean, and today we are going to SCP-3191. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get right into this. I already expanded all the logs and stuff ahead of time. Item number, SCP-3191. Object Class, Safe. Special Containment Procedures. A 3 meter perimeter is to be outlined around SCP-3191. The perimeter may not be entered outside of testing, with at least one supervisor in attendance. Only C and D class personnel may cross the boundary of the perimeter. Wait, what's C class? I know D class is like, that's our inmates that we use as basically testing dummies, but what's C class? Subjects are to wear a harness attached to a tether. If a subject is unable or unwilling to leave, their supervisor is to remain outside the perimeter and remove them by their tether. Psychological examinations are to routinely be administered to all levels of personnel involved with SCP-3191. Description SCP-3191 is a 2.7 meter tall sculpture composed of black metal. It depicts an armless humanoid in a kneeling pose. In place of a head, it possesses a round display screen connected to its neck by numerous table cables. Several loose cables with severed ends protrude from the base of its neck. When a human subject approaches within 3 meters of SCP-3191, its screen displays an animated image of the subject's face. The sculpture emits a, a fast, a, a, f, a, f, a f, Emily of the subject's voice by vibrating its throat and torso in the manner of a loudspeaker. Should another person approach within three meters of SCP-3191, it will replicate their, their face and voice instead. If a subject moves out of range and re-enters it, SCP-3191 replicates them anew. SCP-3191 is a highly effective mimic. It exhibits all knowledge, memories, and psychological traits of the subject it replicates. First to know are to keep in mind that the images displayed by SCP-3191 are not genuine. They were confused? They are simulations without actual self-awareness. Their purpose is unknown and may be harmful. Addendum 3191.1 Recovery In October 2017, the Foundation investigated an active electronics factory with possible business is ties to Anderson Robotics. While searching the building, field agents discovered SCP-3191 in a hidden storage compartment behind a false wall. Its screen displayed a motionless face in, a, in an expression of despair. When the field agent and Andrea Cyborg entered the compartment to retrieve SCP-3191, she reported that, she that the face changed to resemble her own. Simultaneously, SCP-3191 reported that with Agent Cyborg's voice that senses had ceased functioning, and there is that the sculpture might emit a sentry deprivation field. The data that I could hear someone talking about faces and advise other personnel to approach with caution. <sighs> After alerting a nearby task force this unit, agents Alberg attempted to explain the face's situation to SCP-3191. It refused to believe her and accused her of being a trick caused by SCP-3191. Other agents attempted to intervene, but SCP-3191 appeared unable to hear them. The task force arrived shortly after and moved SCP-3191 to a Foundation facility, employing long-range equipment to avoid entering its area of effect. The factory was later proven to have no connection to Anderson Robotics. It remains under observation. Whew. 
Addendum 3191-2 D-Class Testing Log Test Log Behavior Without Interaction Date October 1970 Conducted by Supervisor Douglas Saville Following, the following test was conducted on CP3191's baseline behavior and to serve as a control case for subsequent and tests. I'm going to name this is, is particular personnel Bob because uh, the, the whole entire D and an and enter number here thingy just really bugs me. Bob enters the 3 meter radius wearing earplugs. SCP-3191 displays a replica of the, the subject without ear, earplugs which becomes agitated. Bob steps out of the circle and is uh, escorted from the room. SCP-3191 repeatedly expresses anxiety about its condition and requests eight and ex an ex extra from the circle. It requests escalate and its requests escalate in volume and uh, vehemence, eventually deteriorating into a mix of desperate pleas and shouted expletives. And so, 17 minutes later, SCP-3191 falls silent. Four and a half minutes of testing, SCP-3191 requests aid. 13 hours is in, SCP-3191 begins to talk to itself. This is for another 8 hours, it's a of swearing, pause and sobbing. And at nearly 24... Uh, at, at 21, almost 22 hours after her first meeting Bob, SCP-3191 begins for 10 hours. All your silence and speech continued in this manner for several days, gradually diminishing in intensity. Eventually, the record produced no sounds other than occasional whispers. Oh, whimpers, my bad. And a log. Test log. Behavior with interaction. Date, October 20th, 2017. Conducted by Supervisor Douglas Seville. Forward. The following test was conducted to determine whether or contact with SCP-3191 would be harmful to C-Class personnel. The subject, Bob, was confined with a 3 meter radius for the duration of the, the test. Begin log. 30 seconds in. Subject attempts to specify the, the, the replica with conversation. Initially successful. 4 minutes in. Subject reveals their identity. Conversation becomes tense. Four and a half minutes in, subject and replica a challenge each other with questions designed to reveal the other as a fake. Both perfectly answer all questions. Argon continues at length. Fifteen minutes in, Argon reaches peak hostility. Our attention is fine. Almost eighteen minutes in, subject and replica remnants about their shared past. About twenty-seven minutes in, subject and replica reach a tentative. As far as the truth, subject agrees to help the replica escape its situation. Over the next several hours, subject has increasingly panicked suggestions, none of which the replica's mental state deteriorates substantially. Subject grows progressively more distressed and frequently apologizes. Five hours in, subject sits on the floor with their eyes closed, ignoring the replica. Five and a half hours in, subject stands up, turns, and vigorously assaults S3191. About still five hours. Supervising personnel reluctantly enter the circle to remove the subject. SCP-3191 is a replica of one of the intervening cells. And about a minute and a half after that, said personnel Ohesse's up moving the radius, then quickly forces the subject back into the radius for a moment. SCP-3191 generates a uh, of the subject. At 5 hours, 36 minutes and 55 seconds, no observation, said the subject. End of log. Closing statement. Psychological, physiological examination of D-71 on, on 8 and 8, concluded that the subject's emotional distress naturally, and that there were no other signs of harm. SCP-3191 was cleared for C-class testing. Addendum 91.3 C class testing. Interview number 37. Begin log. So it's me then, isn't it? Yes. This is the sound of a slow exhalation. 
I was thinking, I don't know, maybe the lights turned off right as I stepped inside the circle or something. I mean, I don't, um, I still feel like me. Let's keep this professional, okay? Easy for you to say. Yes, of course. So how about we start with visual? Visual, yeah, so I don't feel blind. I like there's nothing to see, like I'm in a pitch black room. By room, do you mean that that I sense walls or ceiling? Right. God, that's weird. As soon as I said room, I thought to myself, that could give the wrong impression. I should clarify. I guess you were thinking the same thing. I mean, that's probably going to keep happening, but you need to let me finish my sentences anyway. Right, of course, sorry. No, I don't sense walls or anything like that. Just something about the space around on me. It feels small. Actually, is Dr. Chian in there with you? Tell her she might want to screen future candidates for claustrophobia. She's not here. I'll tell her. Moving on to auditory then. Yeah, well, you don't sound anything like me. These those recordings of my voice with the different filters they tried, you don't sound like any of those either. I've been trying to figure it out. Maybe the pitch? Could you do an octave? Maybe it's more like you're hearing your actual voice. No filter or anything from the outside of your body, so it sounds very different. Because funny enough, when you are actually talking, your voice sounds different to you because you're making the noise. There's noise in your body that along with it. Okay, so I'll see you don't in your body, so they don't, don't hear your voice the way you hear it. Anyway. Mm, that was bad, let me... Yeah, I'm gonna... Okay. Hmm... Yeah. Alright, I guess it's something else. Let's keep going and maybe I'll figure it out while you're talking. I think it's hard of what I said, anyway. Okay, pro proprioceptive. I've been trying to think about it. My body, I mean, it's... I, it's not there. I keep... I mean, you kind of have to pay attention to your body all the time. Blinking, flexing, that kind of thing, you know? I keep wanting to crack my knuckles. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do that all the time, don't I? Yeah, I, I try and I can't because I don't have any knuckles. And now all I can think about is the fact that I have no goddamn knuckles. Like, you could punch something right now. You could go punch it hard enough to leave a bruise. But where you'd feel that? I want to punch it so badly, I feel it. To remind myself, that's where my hands are. The fact that I won't ever that again is really messing with me. I keep trying to remember what it's like. It's like an itch I can't scratch. I get why this is crazy. It's with numbness, you can feel the parts of your body being numb. And people who get amputated, they have phantom limbs, limbs or whatever, right? If I if I try to focus my mind on any part of my body, I never get an answer back. Not silence, not a blank page, just the end of a book. That's it. Alright, right, sorry, can we... You know the worst part is you're not. Not sorry. It's not real to you. We were supposed to get in the mindset of being able to believe it, so the replica, uh, so I'd be less traumatized. But I never really believed it. Not my gut. If I did, I'd never have agreed to this. Let's talk about the rationality. Your sense of gravity up down. No, let's not talk about gravity. You're not listening to me. I made the dumbest decision of my life, and I'm going to trapped in this dark fucking void. Not body. I can't stop thinking about that. As I did measure its electrical activity. The one I was thinking that, what if all the old replicas are still there inside it somehow? I mean, no matter what, this is the last chance I have at a real conversation. Real? Could you clarify that? That training we did in the sense of deprivation tank uh, to prevent hallucinations? 
Yeah, it's not working. Listen, you can't let them make you do this again. I should have to remind you that you have a job to do. I'll tell you about the goddamn gravity. You promise never to do this again. Okay, promise. There isn't any. Satisfied? Thank you. Are you ready to move on to the identity section? You can have a short break if you want. No, please don't go. Just, just keep talking with me. Okay. Sutter asks several questions about their personal history, all of which SCP-3191 answers correctly. What is your phone number? I don't know, and neither do you. Like, why was it from my memory, so... Or you could ask them that question and see what would happen. Huh? I don't know what that's supposed to prove. Could you tell me the number? The actual number before I asked you, I did not read that in order. Wow. Hey, that's fine. It's... Number. Okay, thanks. If you were a vegetable, what vegetable would you be? That's the dumbest question I've ever- I cannot believe they told you to ask that. I don't know, cabbage? Yeah, cabbage would be my answer too. So what, are all options going to be like that? No, that was the last one. Wait, what? They said that's it. Now they go over the results and decide what's next. No, wait. You have to make them use a different subject. You promised. Oh, trust me. I'm... There's no way I'm going near this thing again. So you believe me? Listen, I have to go. Please, I need to know. Oh, sure, sure. I love the idea of trying to fall asleep while well, all I can think about is the possibility that somewhere inside this thing, I'm, I'm sorry, I really have to go. No, please, let's talk about, let's talk about, let's do celebrity impersonations. Think about it, I'm a perfect conversational partner. We could try to surprise each other. But it's just a little bit of the time of what means so. Please. This is the last chance I get. No. I'm sorry. I have to leave. Fuck them. Don't abandon me. Sorry. I, I've got to go. No, 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 no. Listen, you don't have to. Are you still there? Can you hear me? Please. I can't. End log. Closing statement, Sutter's request to transfer another project to another project was approved. The unsavory behavior displayed by the replica in spite of the subject's training may indicate that SCP-3191 uses its intimate knowledge of subjects to cause him emotional distress. Clearly. I mean, that was SCP-3191. And I think it's also known as the Mind Emulator or something like that. If you like this video, please like, like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!